Adding an in-cell drop-down menu. One thing that can really help speed up data entry, and also help eliminate some mistakes, is the practice of adding in-cell drop-down menus to your spreadsheet. A sample drop-down has been created in the yellow shaded cell. When selecting it, a small down arrow is displayed, and clicking the arrow presents a list of values available for selection. Selecting one places the value in the cell. To remove the cell, simply use the delete key. If a user attempts to type in a value that's not from the specified list, an error message is displayed. Clicking cancel deletes the invalid entry and the user is back to choosing one of the listed options. The process for adding a drop-down menu is pretty simple. Suppose we wanted to add one to this top green cell that gives the user a choice of either yes or no. To do this, having selected the cell where we want the drop-down to appear, go up to the data menu, select validation, and in the interface that comes up, one of three tabs will be on top. We're concerned with the settings tab. In the allow field, select list. And in the source field, type the values that you want to appear in the dropdown, separated by commas. You can also put a space after the comma, makes no difference. Make sure that this in cell dropdown checkbox is checked and click OK. And our drop down menu is working. Building on the same method, we can also have Excel pull the values for our drop down from a range of cells in the spreadsheet itself. So for this example, suppose in this middle green cell we wanted a drop down that had the values highlighted here in this orange area. To do that, once again, select the cell where you want the drop down to appear. Data, Validation, Settings tab. You want List in the Allow field. And this time, instead of typing the values in, we're going to click on Source and then drag our mouse over the cells that contain the values we want to use. Notice that Excel puts in the range address from those cells. Click OK and our drop-down is working. One handy feature of this is that if you change one of the values in your range, your drop-down is also updated. But rather than have all these drop-down values clutter up your page, it's a little cleaner to pull them from another sheet. Excel makes this a bit more complicated, but it can be done. First, let's try doing it the way we've already learned. For this example, I'd like to pull in these values for the months and place them in this, this cell, bottom green cell next to billing month. So, selecting the cell that we where we want to put the drop down, data, validation, settings, list, and source, when I attempt to click on the tab, the sheet tab, it doesn't allow me. And if I try to be clever and type in the specific address on another sheet, Excel gives me a message that specifically says I can't use references to other worksheets or workbooks for a drop-down. So according to Excel, it can't be done. But there is a trick to get around this. We'll need to use something called a named range, which is a whole other tutorial topic, but we'll touch enough on it here to produce our drop-down. Basically, rather than list a specific spreadsheet address for a drop-down source, we're going to give that address a name and list that name as the source. Probably a little bit easier just to show you. So first of all, we're going to name the range. I already have it selected. If I go up to Insert, Name, Define, 
I'm going to name this range months and click OK. Back over on the sheet where I want to add the drop down, I once again select the cell where I want the drop down to appear. Data, validation, settings, allow field should be list. And in the source, now I'm going to type equals and the name of the range that I created. Click OK. And it's pulling the values from the other sheet. So, using the three methods we've just examined, we have a fair amount of flexibility in using drop down menus. Look for this and other handy Excel tutorials at Excelopedia.com.